The city of Hong Kong is a major economic power with significant wealth and resources available to fund large infrastructure projects. They have access to more resources than any other city in the world, and so construction projects in the city are usually supersized. So let's take a look at 15 incredible mega projects in Hong Kong. Number 15, Zhuhai Jinwan Offshore Wind Farm. Wind farms, they're part of the big future of renewable energy, and they seem to be popping up everywhere, and Hong Kong is no exception. The Zhuhai Jinwan Offshore Wind Farm is a project developed by the Blondong Yudian Zhuhai Offshore Wind Company, and their wind turbines are installed on fixed foundations. This massive project currently generates about 729,000 megawatt hours of electricity, and therefore offsets 433,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions a year, which is a pretty stellar feat. The wind farm is connected to the southern power grid and sits about six and a half miles south of Sanso Island in the bay and consists of 55 turbine generator systems. Construction on the project began at the end of 2018, and the Guangdong Energy Group invested a substantial amount of money into the project, $851 million to be exact. But the project is top dog when it comes to wind power in the region, and even managed to be built during a global pandemic, and even made it through the area's notoriously tough weather. This offshore wind farm is the largest offshore wind power project in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, and supplies the larger area with clean, low carbon, and most importantly, safe energy. Number 14. Northern Metropolis Development Strategy As of 2020, Hong Kong has a population of about 7.5 million people, and the area just covers about 430 square miles. So when you have that many people in that small of a space, there are bound to be some housing issues. But the Hong Kong government has been able to identify about 350 hectares of land that can produce about 330,000 public housing units over the next decade or so. When it comes to public housing, those who need it the most typically have to wait about six years before anything really happens, and so the local government is hoping to cut that time down significantly with their housing and land increase project. The Northern Metropolis Development Strategy is an incredibly ambitious project, so there are undoubtedly a few hurdles and hoops the government will have to jump through. First, the Hong Kong government must claim the land for public housing from the original owners while taking their best interests into account as well, and the owners have the right to challenge the appropriation of their land. Once the housing is built, infrastructure like rail systems, roads, and highways need to be implemented to increase accessibility. But the biggest issue here is money. The government hasn't yet calculated what the Northern Metropolis Development Strategy will cost. But when it comes to building and developing new cities, it can cost about $1 million per future resident. And if Hong Kong is looking to build 330,000 housing units, then they're looking at one big bill. Number 13, Hong Kong Airport Expansion and Modernization. During the global pandemic of 2020, Hong Kong was all but cut off from the rest of the world for about two years, causing the Hong Kong International Airport to be all but empty during that time. Now the government looks to implement one of their most expensive mega-projects yet in an expansion and modernization. It started with a brand new runway, which cost $18 billion alone, but increased the size of the airport by 50% and added a good 1,600 acres to the airport. But it's not stopping with the new runway, because Hong Kong International Airport looks to build a new entertainment, retail, and commercial complex to the tune of $2.6 billion. The new section is on track to be larger than New York's Grand Central Terminal and is being built by the Hong Kong local New World Development Company. The grant plan is being implemented with the hopes of making Hong Kong even more of an international aviation hub, especially since only half a million passengers have passed through the airport in 2022. It's an incredibly tough and expensive project, but worth it, considering the airport's the first thing travelers are gonna pass through when they enter Hong Kong for the first time. Number 12, Lentau Tomorrow Vision. One of Dubai's biggest claims to fame is its Palm Islands, a series of man-made islands and one-day tourist destinations. But Hong Kong has thrown its name into the hat of island builders with one of their more recent and hopefully mega projects. Hong Kong is aiming to create the largest artificial island in the world that will come with a $60 billion price tag. 
The hope of the island isn't just to look cool, but to help solve Hong Kong's growing housing crisis by adding 2,500 acres of artificial land right off the island of Lantau, which is set to be twice the size of the aforementioned Palm Island in Dubai. Work on the Lantau Vision of Tomorrow is scheduled to begin in 2025, and residents likely won't be able to move there until the year 2032. This artificial island will provide enough space for up to 260,000 housing units, with more than 70% of them being public housing, with the rest safe for those who can truly afford it. Plus, the Hong Kong government will also need to build infrastructure like schools, shops, municipalities, and of course, methods of transportation to get on and off the island. While all of this may sound pretty cool, it does come with a bit of a catch. The Lantau Tomorrow Vision has received a great deal of criticism from environmentalists, though, because of the negative effects it will likely have on local ecosystems beneath the surface. Number 11. Northern Link Project Offering a public transportation system in the bustling region of Hong Kong is pretty important. Building a good rail system can give any city its own pulse. So the Hong Kong government has really begun the Northern Link project to give people an affordable way to get around. The MTR Corporation was officially given the go-ahead to proceed with their $7.9 billion project for the Seven Mile Railway System. The Northern Link project will comprise the Kutung Station to the existing Kemsheng Road Station on the West Rail Line and will be doled out in two phases, with the first phase commencing hopefully in 2023 and taking just four years to complete. The Kutung Station will serve all of the transportation needs of the Kutung North New Development Area, which will eventually accommodate 119,000 people and bring in about 33,000 jobs to the area. And the station will save the public at least about 135 million hours of travel time for the next 50 years. But something on this scale is also going to have its economic benefits as well and aims to save about $1.7 billion in the long run. Once Phase 1 is complete, the East and West Rail Lines will be connected to close the railway loop around the new territories and Kowloon, allowing people from both ends of the area to make it through rush hour about 15 minutes faster. Number 10. Hong Kong Zuhai Macau Bridge The Hong Kong Zuhai Macau Bridge is a 34-mile-long bridge and tunnel system made of three cable-stayed bridges, an undersea tunnel, and four artificial islands and will take commuters and travelers over the Lingding and Zhuzhou channels to connect the regions of its namesake. But its real claim to fame here is that it's the longest sea crossing and longest open sea fixed link in the world. Construction on the bridge began at the end of 2009 and took nine years to complete and ran up a bill of about $18.8 billion US. But everyone involved is really getting some bang for their buck because the bridge has been built to last for the next 120 years, meaning four generations can live to use and appreciate it. The bridge was built in sections and much of it was funded by bank loans and shares amongst governments of China, Hong Kong and Macau, and the first people to drive over it were journalists and the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, and now sees not only cars but shuttle buses as well. Originally, the trip between any of these three regions took about four hours, but thanks to this bridge, that time has been cut down substantially to just 30 minutes. Well worth it. Number 9. Central Wan Chai Bypass The Central Wan Chai Bypass is one of the most important pieces of infrastructure in Hong Kong today. It's a two-and-a-half-mile trunk road that gets folks between the Sheng Wan and Fortress Hill and officially opened to traffic at the beginning of 2019. The project was originally approved in 2009 by the Legislative Council Finance Committee in 2009, meaning it took about a decade to see through. And while the original estimated cost was around $3.6 billion, in the end, the entire project ran up a bill of $4.5 billion. The central Wan Chai Bypass starts from Rumsey Street flyover at Shen Wang before a tunnel outside of the International Finance Center, and then heads east past the Tamar site in Admiralty with an interchange at Wan Chai. From there, the road heads east under the proposed reclamation areas of Wan Chai, Causeway Bay, and Tin Hao. But one of the major and most expensive parts of the bypass, though, is the ventilation system. This ventilation system doesn't just supply air to the most congested areas. It's also been implemented as the main fire countermeasure to remove smoke in case of a tunnel fire. Number 8. Hung Yuen Wai Highway Perhaps better known as the HYWH, the Hung Yen Wai Highway is a controlled access highway in the North District of the New Territories in Hong Kong. 
it diverges from Route 9 on the Fenling Highway and Kaolong Hong to cross the Shaotuk Road and eventually connects to the Hongyong Wai control point just before the border checkpoint between Hong Kong and China. The HYWH itself comprises three parts, the Longshan Tunnel, the longest land road tunnel in Hong Kong, the Chengchang Tunnel, and another 3.4 miles of viaducts and roads. The HYWH has just two lands in either direction and a humble speed limit of about 50 miles an hour. Plans for the HYWH began back in 2006, and a checkpoint was finally agreed upon by the Hong Kong and Shenzhen governments in 2008 that would connect the existing highway networks. This joint venture for this seven-mile-long highway cost a pretty penny, with the Longshang Tunnel alone costing one and a half billion dollars. But when all was said and done, it was named the Tunneling Project of the Year in the 2019 Tunneling Awards. In the end, the entire HYWH cost the respective governments a total of about two and a half billion dollars. Number seven, Twin Ma Line. With its first phase opening to the public in 2003, the Twin Ma Line is a railway that forms part of Hong Kong's Mass Transit Railway, or MTR. The entire Twin Ma Line runs for about 35 miles, making it the longest line on the entire MTR network. When the first of the six phases were complete, the second phase began, ending in 2004, with the third ending that same year and the final three phases wrapping up in 2009, 2020, and 2021, respectively. In the end, the Twin Ma Line services a total of 27 stations, more than any other line within the MTR system. And if you were to take the line of all the ways around, you're looking at about 73-minute ride from start to finish. The line is the most expensive rail project in Hong Kong to date, costing roughly $11.5 billion US, and future extensions are currently in the works. Number 6. Kowloon Walled City Okay, the next entry on our list may be one of the most well-known projects, if not the most interesting. The Kowloon Walled City has become the backdrop of many Instagrammers, but its story is far more interesting than those posting the photos will ever know. Once a Chinese military fort, the Kowloon Walled City is now an ungoverned and very densely populated enclave. It later became an urban settlement in 1945, but by 1990 was home to about 50,000 residents in a 6.4-acre space. And as time went on, developers began adding new modular units over the existing ones, which cost a few million on their own. But eventually, the quality of life for many of the walled city's residents would deteriorate, and sanitary conditions in particular became an issue, and so demolitions would eventually begin in 1993. And so too did the compensation of the estimated 33,000 people who called the place home and ran their businesses there, and so a total of $350 million US was paid out. So what was once a somewhat cut-off city, many parts of which never truly saw the light of day, is now a beautiful open space free for all to enjoy. Number 5. Yushang Expressway The Yushang Expressway is one of the more recent mega-projects taken on by Hong Kong, with construction officially opening at the end of 2020. The new project is running up a bill so far of about $4 billion and is about seven miles long with two tunnels, including the Longshang Tunnel, which is the longest road tunnel in Hong Kong. The Yushang Expressway is one of the core works of the Liantang Hong Yun Wai Control Point project, which is included in the Hong Kong and Macau chapter of China's 12th five-year plan. The purpose of this high-speed border crossing is to strengthen Hong Kong's connectivity within the Greater Bay Area and will not only link Hong Kong to Macau, but also to the nine mainland cities, including the Guangdong province, to form a hub of commerce, innovation, and technology. As it stands now, the control point is in its final stages, and parts of the Yushang Expressway are open to traffic. The border crossing is set to be the first land-based in Hong Kong to provide direct access facilities for both commercial and passenger vehicles, and is designed to handle about 17,000 commercial vehicle trips and 30,000 passenger vehicle trips a day, which is exponentially more than the current route is able to handle. Plus, it cuts travel time in half, which is always a good thing. Number 4. Sha Tin to Central Link the Sha Tin to Central Link is an incredibly important extension of the MTR rapid transit network that we covered earlier. The link is divided into two sections, the Phase 1 Twin Ma Line, which runs from Taiwai Station to the New Territories over to Hong Hom Station in Kowloon. The Taiwai Hong Hom segment of the link contains the Ma On Shan Line to the West Rail Line from the Twin Ma Line. The operations of the Taiwai to Kai Tak Station began pretty recently, at the beginning of 2020 
During the construction and in the anticipation of the Tuen Ma Line, the existing Kuantong Line was extended out from its previous terminus at Wei Ma Te and Wampo stations. The official extension also includes the new Homan Tin Station to provide an interchange over the Tuen Ma Line. The second phase of this massive project in Hong Kong extends the East Rail Line from the Hong Hom in Kowloon to Admiralty on Hong Kong Island and opened in May of 2020. But what makes the Sha Tin to Central Link so interesting is that plans were laid down in the 1960s because it roughly follows the scheme of the original East Kowloon Line, which was proposed but never constructed. The Sha Tin to Central Link is a major part of the property railway scheme as part of the Hong Kong government's railway development strategy of 2020 and is one of the most used lines in the area. Number 3. Tung Chung New Town Expansion the North Lantau New Town is the newest of the nine new towns in Hong Kong, and it's located on the northern coast of Lantau Island in the New Territories. It covers a large part of the reclaimed land, and it's the only new town on the island district and the youngest new town in all of Hong Kong. It's got a current population of nearly 220,000 people, and it's the subject of a new expansion plan that would examine the development potential and opportunities of Tung Chung, as well as to improve the community and regional facilities. The new town is getting an upgrade and a facelift to somehow make it even newer. The Tung Chung New Town expansion involves a three-stage public engagement exercise that was launched by the planning, civil engineering, and development departments, and the hard plans were officially drafted in 2017. The next year, the Tung Chung New Town expansion project was put into physical action, and about 320 acres of land was reclaimed in order for the first phase of the mega-project to begin. When phase one is officially complete, the area will have enough space to accommodate another 140,000 people. It's the first reclaimed land for the new town expansion since the Sung Kwan O South reclamation in 2003, which wrapped up its final phase as the new town expansion began, completing the Hong Kong mega project cycle. Number two, Greater Bay Area Initiative. The Greater Bay Area comprises Hong Kong, Guangdong, and Macau, and has a population of about 71 million people, and has a combined GDP of $1.6 trillion. It's one of the most exciting, vibrant, and economically open parts of the region. The Greater Bay Area Initiative links 11 cities across the east and west of the Pearl River Delta to create an integrated economic and business hub. The initiative hopes to enhance infrastructure connectivity, enhance the existing infrastructure, create a globally competitive manufacturing industry, strengthen environmental protection and conservation with more green development, create better access to education and training, healthcare, leisure, and cultural activities, and create an overall better cooperation across the three major cities. The Greater Bay Area has already a higher GDP than Australia, but if everything goes according to plan, then it will have a greater economic output than that of New York City. New financial and trade opportunities will open up in Hong Kong, increasing the wealth of their growing middle class and sending the region into the future. Number 1. Central and Wan Chai Reclamation the biggest mega-project in Hong Kong is without a doubt the Central Wan and Chai Reclamation Projects. The Hong Kong government launched the project in the 1990s to reclaim the land for various purposes, mostly cultural and economic. This includes transportation improvements to the MTR stations, the Airport Express Railway, the Central Wan Chai Bypass, and many of the public recreation areas like the Central Harbor Front Event Space, Tamar Park, and the Hong Kong Observation Wheel. The scale of this project is absolutely massive and unlike anything the world has ever seen. The central reclamation has been broken up into three phases, the first of which will reclaim about 50 acres of land while redeveloping another 15 for the construction of the Hong Kong station of the Airport Express Railway and to provide new land for piers on the water. Phase 1 took nearly five years and ended just before the year 2000 and alone cost over $34 billion. The third and final phase for Central ended in 2011 and cost nearly $80 billion. Then there were the two phases of work for the Wan Chai project, which took several years and several billion dollars more to complete. In the end, the project made for a new bypass, the Island Eastern Corridor Link and Hong Kong Island section of the Sha Tin Central Link and the North Island Line. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.